There have been a lot of questions being asked about the differences between the original Ninja Foodi indoor grill and the newer model, which is a Ninja Foodi as well, but it is the XL with smart technology. And that was kind of interesting to me and intriguing. So I'm gonna show you how the smart technology works and go over the differences. We're gonna see which one can hold more pork chops and we're gonna grill up some kielbasa. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we are gonna go over the differences between the two models of the Ninja Foodi indoor grill. This is the original Ninja Foodi indoor grill without the probe. There is a third model that has a probe, but I did not purchase that one, so this one does not have the internal probe. However, you can use an external uh, meat thermometer, the probe kind, in this perfectly fine. Um, and then the newer model, which is the XL with smart technology. So uh, for those of you who have been following me for a while, you probably know I wasn't a big fan of the indoor grill. In fact, I returned my first model because I just had a lot of issues with it smoking. But people were loving it. They were raving about it and they were begging me to do recipes in it. So I went ahead and purchased a second um, Ninja Foodi, the original indoor grill model without the probe. And guess what, I didn't have any of those issues at all. So no smoking issues and we did find ourselves using it, but not quite as much as we would have liked to use it, I think. We just always seem to go back to the Ninja Foodi pressure cooker. Um, but it, it works great, it really, it works perfectly. So why did I get another one? Because I wanted to find out about this smart technology. I am not a preset kind of person. So, you know, some of the instant pots have all these presets. Put hit, hit a button for rice, hit a button for soup, and it's already programmed in. The blender behind me has presets, you know? And I've just never been a preset kind of person because I like to control the cooking of my food. But it was really interesting um, to read up about the smart technology. I'm gonna show it to you in action and go over the features of what it does. So that was pretty cool. But the main difference between the two units is the measurements, and that's what everybody wants to know. Which one is better, which one is better? Well, it depends on what you wanna do, honestly. So this, they're both about the same height. There might be a half of an inch difference, and they're both about the same depth, so that's not a big deal, you know, from front to back. Um, this one is obviously wider, you can definitely see that. It has a new design, which I think is very attractive, so I like the overall looks of this one better than the original, but the main difference is in the depth, okay? So that's what's going to probably sway you one way or the other on which one to get. So the depth, the depth of the pot, which I can pull out here, you can even see that this one is just a few inches deep, probably about three inches deep. Um, so it is much shallower than this one, which is a good, I would say a good five inches deep. So, I mean, really, let's see if I can pull them both up for you. Big difference there, okay? Um, however, with the loss of the depth, we get a little bit more surface area there on the grills. So, the big question, how many pork chops can you fit on the XL versus the indoor grill? So what I have here is eight pork chops. I'm gonna put them on as if I was cooking them. I am not going to cook them because Jeff and I do not need eight pork chops and I'm gonna get them into the freezer for testing some delicious recipes and not wasting them doing a demo. So I'm not cooking the pork chops. They do cook perfectly fine on either grill. I will tell you, I have done it before. It works perfectly fine. But this is more about how many will fit. These are all about the same size, so we're pretty good there. And and I'm not gonna put them like, like super close together because I wouldn't in real life, I, if I was cooking these, I would want a little bit of separation. You don't wanna have your meat crowded on the pan. So let's see here. Now, I could do that, I, I could do that. Okay, I can do two. That's enough room, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I might be able to get all eight of these on here. But I, I'm thinking I'm gonna probably stop at seven. Let's see. Well, eight will fit. It's a little tight, but I mean, definitely eight will fit here. Little tight, 
little tighter than, than I would ordinarily do, but you know what, it fits. Okay, so eight pork chops fit perfectly there. Now we're gonna take these over and put them on this grill and see how many pork chops will fit. Seven, probably. All right, it looks like I can get seven pork chops on that grill. I mean, I could make it work for eight, but I would definitely be butting right up against, um, and, and I wouldn't cook like that. So I would say comfortably you can fit seven pork chops on the grill. So it is not as much of a difference as people think. Like you can get a really, like a large ribeye steak you can get maybe two or three on this grill. You can get two on here. So there is a difference, but not as much as people may think. So that's what you wanna balance with. Do you need that extra depth? Are you the kind of person that wants to do a lot of casseroles and, and different types of baking in, in a, the deeper pot? Or are you a griller? If you are a griller and you love to grill up meat and you know sausages or whatever, then I think this one is probably where I would lean. I use this one a lot more than I ever used this one. And they cook about the same, and they cook the same. It's not about that. It's about, I'm a, if I'm gonna use a grill, I'm a griller. I'm not gonna make brownies in here. You know, I'll make brownies in the oven or I'll make brownies in the Ninja Foodie, but I'm not gonna make brownies in, in the grill. Now I know a lot of people do, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just not my go-to for baking. Um, but if it is yours, then this is probably better for you. If you're a griller, this one's probably better. And I think the smart technology is pretty cool. So let's get into that. I'm gonna clean all this up and then we'll get to cooking our kielbasa. All right, so before I start the preheat, let me go over the probe and the smart technology on the new Ninja Foodi indoor um, XL grill. And this is the thermometer, the probe thermometer that comes with the uh, foodie. It comes with all of them. So as it's an option on the original Ninja Foodie, it comes with all of the models here because of that smart technology. So this probe is integrated. It's a nice little area back here where it just kind of, it's a magnetized, so it just kind of clicks in there. And then you remove it by unwrapping the coil and then just lift up and pull straight out and your probe comes out. Okay, I have seen some people having some trouble getting it back in. You just wanna go like that, press it down, and then wrap it and you're good to go. And then you can pop it back in. All right, so the probe goes into the meat and this little guy sticks right in the side here. There. All right, so that little guy sticks right in the side there. Now, when you turn the grill on, you will see here preset and manual. If this probe is not plugged in, you will not see that option. And that's kind of funny because I thought maybe mine didn't come with it or I got a, I got a unit that wasn't working and then Jeff says, well, maybe you have to plug in the uh, probe thermometer first and sure enough, that's what you have to do to get that option. So these buttons right here, the preset and the manual are what controls the smart technology. You can use the smart technology on any of the features which are the same as the features on the grill. Um, except, yep, the grill has dehydrate too. So yeah, they are exactly the same features on both models of the grill. But you have the added presets. So presets are gonna be for chicken, pork, beef, and fish. Those are your four presets. So you, you know, it's, you're not gonna be able to like set it for any different type of meat. Those are the presets that it comes with. So if you hit the preset button, hit, let's say we're gonna grill, hit the preset button. So pick your temperature first, okay? So pick the function you wanna use first. Um, and this would not work with dehydrate, I should say, because it's not, you're not gonna to dehydrate to these, to these levels. All right, so now you've got rare and beef. So now, instead of worrying about timing for your meats, you are setting your desired doneness, okay? And there's two levels to rare, two levels to medium rare, two levels for medium, no, one level for medium, then medium well, and then probably well done, yes. So there's nine levels on beef that take you from very rare all the way up to well done. So you can choose your temperature range, what you want. It works really well, I have tried it, it works really well. 
And then you also have chicken. Now chicken is only one setting, okay? Because obviously we can't eat rare chicken. So you can only go to well done. Now one of the things about the well done is it's 170 degrees and that is too done for me. So I would never use the chicken preset because 170 degrees internal temperature for chicken is just past where I would take it and it gets a little dry. So I wouldn't use that, I would use the, the manuals. But all the other ones you can control better, but not chicken. Pork, we've got medium rare, medium, and medium well, okay, and well done. So you can control how you like your pork cooked. So it's really helpful, I mean it really is. Um, and then fish. Fish, you've got medium rare, medium, medium well, and well. And I don't think you can have a rare, but maybe. No, no rare. Okay. Now, you can also do exactly what you want to do by using the manual functions. That is when you would just set your temperature. So let's say you want to take your chicken to 165. Then you would just pick your function, pick manual, and set the temperature to 165. The probe, once it registers 165 internally in the chicken, it shuts the grill off and tells you to remove it, remove the meat. So there's no timing worries about it. Um, and I did find that I liked it and I was surprised because again, I'm not a preset kind of person um, and I'm usually a very hands-on cook, but I found it very, very nice to just stick the probe in the chicken or the pork or the steak, make my other components of the meal in other devices and just not even worry about it and let it, when it was done, it alerted me and I took the food out and it was perfectly cooked. So I do really love that about the new grill. And I also like the look of it. I think I mentioned that already. And I just, I just like having the bigger space up for the grilling surface that, you know, so if I was to pick between the two, I would definitely be picking this one. Um, but it's totally my preference. Now with the original, whether you have the probe or you don't have the probe, you can always use a probe. And I'm gonna do that today when we do the kielbasa because I'm just interested. So I'll be looking at this and we'll set them for exactly the same, which even though these are fully cooked, so we don't even need to cook them. I could eat them right now, but I want them to be hot and I want them to be charred. So I want to see if I can get the same experience that we get on the outdoor grill on these indoor grills, okay? So to do that, I need to preheat, and I'm gonna preheat on grill max. We're gonna do that on both of them. Let them preheat, and meanwhile, I'll get the probes in both of these, and then when they are heated, we will put the kibasa on both of them. I'm gonna set the temperature to 165 on the using the smart technology manual function, and we're gonna see you know, how fast that happens. I've already made this once before when we were on a little weekend trip. I took the grill with me, and it took like five minutes, that's it, for it to get a beautiful char. So let's see what happens when we set the probe. And then we'll monitor the internal temperature of the other half of the kielbasa using this one. One thing I wanted to mention is when you insert the probe, you don't want to insert it like going up like this, okay? You want to insert it into the middle of the meat. So like if you have a pork chop or a piece of chicken, you're gonna go right in the middle and right in the middle, okay? And you're gonna insert it so that the probe goes into the meat and it is reading the very mid temperature level of the meat, okay? All right, so we've got the add food, which means that this uh, grill is completely preheated. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the lid here and put the kielbasa on. When you're putting meat on, not really this, this doesn't really matter, but when you're putting like chicken or anything on, press down on it, that's gonna give you the best sear. Um, and then we will close this. Now, we won't know about time, okay? So I've got Jeff keeping track of time here so we can see how long it took. I've got the target temp of the meat to get to 165, and it says here now that it is 66 degrees, okay? So 66 degrees internally. This one's reading 64 internally. That's pretty close. Now we're gonna see how long does it take for the grill to get it up to the 165, and do we have that charring that we want? Now this guy's saying to add the food too, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Same thing, just throw that right on there and close this up and we can monitor the temperature 
right here. And this one will give us a time. So I'm gonna leave it at 10 minutes because in my experience, these have only taken about five minutes. It's really amazing. I wanna peek. Should I peek? I should probably peek. Let me peek at this one. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. Maybe I should peek at this one too. Let's just peek. It's looking really good. Okay, right back down. Okay, this says flip the food. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So really this was our time to peek, right? I wasn't even thinking about that. So let's go ahead and turn this over. That looks so amazing. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip. I don't know if this will tell me to flip. I thought it did, but maybe not. All right, there we go. Now, it's interesting because these have really caught up with each other. We've been doing it, uh, cooking for almost six minutes now. And let's check the temperature here. So we're at 141 over there and we're at 140 here. So really, we are just neck and neck. So they look identical too. So I don't think there's a question about which grill cooks better. I think they both do a great job. It's just simply about surface area and these smart presets. You know, that, that really makes the difference. Like there's so many similarities too. Like both of them have a removable filter so that you can, you know, remove the, the filter and clean it. Both of them have a little area in the back that will collect a little grease that you just wipe out. Um, and both have all the same functions except for the smart technology. Uh, so really it comes down to how you want to use your grill. If you're a true griller, then I'd say this one. If you prefer to bake and do a whole bunch of different things, then I'd go with that one. Now these sausages are already done. So like if you were doing this at home and you wanted to make a kielbasa and you wanted to do it with the max grill function on your indoor grill, you could go just five or six minutes. They are done. I just want to take it all the way to the 165 so you guys see it shut off. So you see exactly what happens with the smart technology. So it looks like it's going to take about seven minutes total uh, for it to turn to um, 165, maybe seven and a half eight minutes. Well, we can get the number from Jeff. Seven minutes, 36 seconds. All right. It turns completely off. Now, this is another cool feature. I'm going to go ahead and open this one up too because we, we don't want to overcook it. All right. So, remove your food. Now, do you see it starting to count up here? It's going to count up a five-minute rest period. That is just something handy if you make a steak or chicken or pork and you need it to rest before you cut into it. You would just let it rest for five minutes before serving it. And I usually let my meat uh, rest even up to 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna turn both of the grill, well, this one's already off. We'll just let it, let it do its thing. All right, so we've got our two sausages. Now to look at them, they look, they are beautiful. They are beautiful. They are beautiful. Like, this is exciting. Then I don't have to go outside and fire up that grill to make these anymore. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this, pull this off here. All right. And then just take it off. And does that stop the time? No, it doesn't. Okay, great. And do the same thing here. Let's see, curious, did we get up to the one? Oh yeah, see, we raised it even more. So keep that in mind, like when you're, when I talk about the chicken temperature here being one, I think it's 170 and that's all you can set it for with the preset. By the time your chicken rests, it's gonna be closer to like 175 or 180. That's why I would never use that preset. I'm not sure what they were thinking. Now these might be overdone for some people, but not for me. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this end piece right here. Oh my goodness. This reminds me so much of the outdoor grill. I am really, really happy with this. Really happy. Now, I don't expect to have any different taste or anything. Um, they're gonna be the same, I'm sure. And I'm gonna dip it in this sauce. What I use as a dipping sauce is equal amounts of ketchup, mustard, and a little bit of sweet or dill pickle relish. And that's what we use as our little dipping sauce for this. Mmm. It's definitely got the same texture 
that you would get on the outdoor grill. I am really pleased with that. Wonderful. Mm. They're both perfect. It does a really good job, both of them, equally perfect. Um, so again, I hope that this helps answer some of the questions that you have had and that you picked the right Ninja Foodie indoor grill for your cooking style.